Hi again everyone. In this video we're going to discuss the mathematics of error estimation. And you can view um, the ideas herein as an illustration of an application of partial derivatives and Taylor polynomials for functions of two variables. Let's motivate the ideas though. When we take measurements, say some physical dimensions, errors in our record recorded measurements are pretty much unavoidable. And in many cases, what we're after is to obtain measurements to be within some prescribed degree of accuracy. And this video is going to look at the effects that those small variation, those small errors in measurements have in certain calculations. So let me, let me put this into a particular example here. Suppose that we are wanting to calculate the volume of a cylindrical can. To do that, we would have to measure the radius and the height. Now, in this particular example, our measurements for the height is 12 centimetres and the measurement for the radius is 5 centimetres, with errors in our measurements being no more than half a millimetre. As a result of the errors in our measurements, obtain an estimate on the percentage error in calculating the volume of the can. So I'm going to let R be the true radius of the base, and I'm going to let H be the true, the actual height of the can. Let's see how we can solve this problem. Well, what do we know? Well, H naught is going to be our recorded measurement for the height. R naught is our recorded measurement for the radius. And because we may have some errors involved, the true height is our measurement, 12 centimetres, plus some error. Now, this could be negative, it could be positive. We don't exactly know what this is. And the same for the radius. That has a small error too. Now, all we know is that the errors in our measurements are no more than half a millimetre. So all we can say is that we have the following estimates on the error for our measurement of the height. And so let's just convert that all to the same set of units. And similarly, we have the following estimate for our measurement for the radius. Okay, well, let's remind ourselves of the volume, how to calculate the volume for a cylindrical can. Well, let V be the volume of the can. Well, we have the following, pi r squared h. Now, this is an important equation that we'll come back to, but what we're actually interested in is the error or the difference between the actual volume of the can and our computed volume of the can based on these measurements. Okay, so let's denote the error in V by delta V with delta V defined in the way that you would expect. Okay, it's basically uh, H and R, the true volume of the can minus our computed volume of the can based on these measurements. Okay, so um, essentially it's the following. Just by substituting H with H0 plus delta H, and similarly for R, uh, uh, yep, so 
what we'd like to do is try to calculate this, but the, the point is we can't because delta H and delta R are unknown. All we do is have two estimates on them. Well, what we can actually do here is use a Taylor polynomial approximation. Okay, it's a, it's a linear approximation. So essentially, we can form an absolute, uh, sorry, uh, uh, approximately equal to and introduce partial derivatives here. Okay, so the subscripts mean, so uh, V sub H means dV dH evaluated at this point. dV dR evaluated at this point. Okay, so what we can do now is, again, we don't know what these are, but we do have estimates on them. So I can take absolute values here and here and form an inequality. So if I take absolute values there and there and then use what's known as the triangle inequality, I'll obtain the following. Okay, so this is a very important inequality. This is the, the, the most important inequality here. So essentially I've shown you how to obtain it from the basic uh, linear approximation setup. Okay, so let's calculate these partial derivatives, evaluate them at h naught and r naught. Remember, h naught 12, r naught's 5. And we have an estimate on these guys of 0.05 centimetres here and here. So we can all use that to our advantage. Right, so let's calculate these partial derivatives. V sub h, well, we're going to have the following. Okay. Okay, so we want to eva evaluate this at 12, h equals 12, r equals 5. And let's just substitute in there for r equals 5. We'll get basically pi 5 squared. Now this is less than or equal to 0.05. Over here, this is going to be... 2 pi times 5 times 12. And again, this is less than 0.05. So all you need to do now is clean up a bit. Okay, if we calculate these, we'll get something like the following. Now, I'm not going to clean that up just yet. So here's an estimate for the error between the, uh, I guess, in, in the computed volume. So this is basically an estimate on the difference between the true volume of the can and our computed volume of the can. But let's go back to our question and look at what we're looking for. Obtain an estimate on the percentage error in calculating the volume of the can. So what we would want is to... to estimate the following. It's going to be delta V all over V times 100. Now, v, th this V is um, evaluated at H0, R0. Okay, so we know from up here, this is less than or equal to 0.05 pi times, oops, 145. And V evaluated the volume at 
H0, comma R0 is just going to be 300 pi. And I need to times this all by 100. So I can cancel off now. And I can simplify it. And I'll get down to the following. And this is actually 2 and 5 twelfths. That's approximately equal to 2.42. So our estimate is 2.42%. Okay, so let's review. Based on our measurements, we can expect an estimate, or I guess worst case scenario, um, in calculating the volume of the can, the worst amount we're going to be off is about 2.42%. Is this acceptable? Is this not? Well, we're not told. But let's look at the bigger picture. Let's look at some ideas that you can use when solving all kinds of problems like these. Well, the main inequality, this one here, can be derived from linear Taylor polynomial approximation for the function involved. And I showed you how to do that. Now, when you're working with these problems, don't forget to unify the units involved. Now, it's important that you learn mathematics by doing maths. Um, I've given you two examples here for you to work on. Here, in the first one, you're asked to redo the example that I've just done, but switch out the measurements between the height and the radius and then compare your results. And finally here you're measuring a plot of land and um, this is very, very similar to the example that I've just solved.